everybody, Career Blind Way back. I'm Aaron. I'm Kelvin. I'm Shane. Rick. And we are here with something a little different this time. We're actually doing our own video game top ten list. Mm -hmm. This time we're actually doing our own individual top tens. Not not necessarily like uh, top ten best of the genre, but like top personal ten top tens. All time. Yeah. Like yeah. What all is, time. What's your, what's your favorite games that you've played in your life? Well, I started gaming on the uh, NES mm -hmm. when I was three years old. Super Mario Bros. was the first game I played. And then from there, I went Genesis. Mm -hmm. I had the Nintendo handhelds. Up. Yeah, the, the Game Gear. Yeah. I uh, borrowed that from you once. So I had all the Game Boys Game up until I had the DS. I didn't have anything after that. PSP, and then I went as a Sony sort of fanboy. PS1, PS2, PS3. And then lately, it's been a bunch of PC stuff. Yeah. So that's been sort of my gaming history as far as the video game stuff goes. Shane? Um, I started gaming... I can't really remember, but I know the first console we had was we had a NES and a SNES at the same time. And my earliest me memories are playing Mario Brothers 3 and then Super Mario World. I played a lot of SNES, my favorite console. <clears throat> and then uh, and then we got a PlayStation and a Nintendo 64. And then after that I got a GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and then 360, yeah. Wii. PS3. I didn't have all those. Mostly so I moved on my own. <laughs> well, mostly, yeah. I mean, I remember, I'll, I lived in a house with a bunch of guys when I was 16, 17, 18, so That's I had true. all the consoles. I got a PS3 because of you guys. And I loved, loved the hell out of it. And I have every console oh. once again Xbox One, PS4, uh, Nintendo Switch, and I play a bunch of PC stuff. I had a PSP, PlayStation Vita. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo <clears throat> Game Boy, Game Boy Advance SP. Great console. Nintendo DS, Nintendo 3DS. Cool. <clears throat> Probably around three or four, I had a PC, Windows, DOS. yeah, DOS or Windows ninety five with uh, just running a DOS box. Mm -hmm. You got fucking Chip? Did you play Chip? <clears throat> no. Remember Chip, Rick? Did you played Batman Encyclopedia. Yeah, I remember Chip. Chip was an old like Windows ninety five game where like you were like this little guy and it was like a giant like microchippy kind of thing that you played on, but it was like a uh, there were ice. And sticky things, you'd get certain boots and certain keys, certain things to like try to unlock and play the level. It was a big giant puzzle game. Remember oh, mun number munchers? <laughs> yeah. 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 The more I think about it, I have more I remember. Go yeah. on, Gavin. Um, so, PC up through probably uh, 14, uh, and never having any internet or anything like that. If we did have internet, it was dial up. So, no online gaming to speak of. Then, about 14, 15, we got the original Xbox. And we had that for a really long time. And then probably when I was uh, 17, we got a uh, 360. And then soon after, we got a uh, PS3. And we had those for a while. That's the latest consoles that I've owned. Also I, got the PS3 because of me. Yeah, that is true. Sony, where's my check? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then other than that, I've just been a PC gamer throughout. I play more PC <laughs> stuff now than ever. Um, I probably started with the uh, Super Nintendo. I remember playing Nintendo a little bit at like my grandparents because my cousin had it there. And I remember playing a little bit of uh, Sega, I mean, like Streets of Rage and that kind of stuff. Yes, I remember yes. playing some of that at like a neighbor's house over at my grandparents. But I owned a Super Nintendo, played a lot of Super Nintendo games, Super Mario World, all that kind of stuff. Ended up getting a Nintendo 64, played that a lot, and then it started going over to Rick's house where he had a PlayStation. I remember playing the PlayStation a good bit. Then the next generation I moved on to PS2, played PS2 a lot. I didn't, didn't really get an Xbox. Played a little bit here and there from one that I borrowed. Then I moved on, got a PS3, ended up getting a 360 as well, and a Wii, played all those. And then now I have a PS4, and I play a Nintendo Switch and that kind of stuff. Do a lot of PC gaming, though, now. I still play on those a little bit, but not as much as I used to. All right, so let's get to the list proper. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're also going to see individual videos for each of us, so make sure you guys come back for each of our top tens. We're starting with Rick's first. If you listen to this in the podcast form, then... Listen away. Yeah, it's just a long form thing. So, so we got a number of honorable mentions equal to our results on a D4 die. Look at it. So oh, one through I four. Didn't count. I got three. So three honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one is going to be Persona 4. I never played any Persona games. Yes. Never played any of them. I played three. I played four. Fantastic. Like the whole style, the music, everything is absolutely incredible. But it's the characters that really make the game. And that's what makes four so special. Is just... All the characters are likable, but there's like one or two that you really just sort of attach to and just like feel like real people. You know, they're just yeah. written so well. The the voiceover stuff is so great. The story is intriguing. There's this whole murder mystery thing going on. The combat's a lot of fun. 
the Vita had a golden compass. What was it called? It was just Persona 4 Golden. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and I heard it got like a 10 out of 10 everywhere. It's fantastic. Yeah, um, I absolutely it. recommend it. Is. Yeah, it just barely missed my top 10. Another one, I'm going to mention Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within, which is probably not on a lot know. of these guys' lists. Don't know what that is. That is a full motion video point click adventure game by Sierra. PC then? Oh, 90s, yeah. I've watched a playthrough of that. Yeah. Most FMB games are pretty bad. Yeah. There's a couple that came out this past year that were pretty okay. Yeah. Contradiction, buy it. Absolutely yes. amazing. That was a fantastic But But um, Gabriel Knight 2 had this amazing story that tied with history of uh, Mad King Ludwig and his castles and the whole thing took place in Germany and you got to explore these castles, solve this mystery and it was all supernatural. It dealt with werewolves. Mm -hmm. It had uh, starring, what you would know him best for is the bartender from Friends. <laughs> from Friends? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the guy with the long red hair that looked kind of like this but red. He did a great job. Yeah, I loved it. Okay. And it's just an incredible game. <laughs> and then my last one, it's like pulling teeth but I'm gonna go with Phoenix Wright. Objection! The game's right there. How much of a game is it? You know, it's sort of an experience, right? You kind of have choices, but there's only one way through it. But that time through it is incredible. Like, it's so funny. Like, yes. It's, it's one of the funniest games I've ever played in my entire life. And the characters are just so well-written and so lovable. Charming. So charming, yeah, absolutely. And it's it's fairly you know challenging at parts. And that was on the DS, wasn't it? Much like a point and click kind of like adventure game. Yep. And then like we based on like what kind of clues you found on how your court cases went, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and um, you know it it had this great balance of like quiet moments, but then with the courtroom, like everything sort of geared up to a crescendo. And good music. And fantastic music. Yeah. So those are my top three honorable mentions. Okay. This is going to be interesting because I'm sure each of our lists are very different because we've all had different genres and stuff that we favored or yeah. uh, consoles that we favored and yeah. stuff like that too. So, so number 10 mm -hmm. is Castlevania Symphony of the Night for the PS1. I've played, I think, every single game in the Castlevania series. Um, Wait, you even even Lord of Shadows 2 backwards. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Every single one. Um, and that one is my favorite. I thought you meant you played the game backwards. I'm like, how did you do that? No, I haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you meant. And it's kind of tough to say, like, which is the best Castlevania, because there's two types of Castlevanias. You have the Metroidvania, which mm -hmm. is what Symphony of the Night is. Yeah, Simon mm -hmm. Belmont uh, games, too. Those aren't quite as Castlevania, but they're more... Uh, You're talking about the second Link Simon's game. Quest? Yeah, it's yeah. more like the second uh, Adventure of Link or whatever. Right, and then you have... Is it, is it Adventure of Link? Is that a two Adventures of Link? Adventures yeah. of Link, yeah. yeah. And then you have, like, the classic Castlevania game where it's much more of just an action platformer. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, you can't walk backwards on stairs, like, <laughs> let alone choosing where to go. Yeah. Like, it's very strict. Um, but I just loved the first time going through Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and there's just so much to explore and so much to find, right? And I love exploring in games, in all kind of games. Like, th there wasn't much of a story. The action was top-notch, clearly. The music, I think it was the first sound, like, CD music that I ever heard. And it blew me away. I still listen to it to this day. Mm. Like, it's just absolutely incredible. The voice acting is terrible, but in a great way. I love that <laughs> voice acting. Yes. It's so good. But, like, just getting to the end of that game and realizing what, right when you think you're done, there's a whole other game in the Inverted Castle. Yeah. Just blew my mind. Like, <laughs> just incredible. And, and it, the gameplay is good enough that I wanted to be good at it. So I played yeah. it over and over again trying to really sort of master it. I got that back on like PS3. It was like one of the classics that you could buy or something mm -hmm. like that. And I feel like I got to where things turned upside down and then I just had stopped playing. I don't know if it was other games or yeah. life or what it was, but I, I don't think I ever actually beat it. Mm. It was the same thing with like, uh, like Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I remember getting to like the end of it, but you had to like do it again. Right. And I just never did it. <laughs> I was just like, well, I feel like I beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I came close. <laughs> Alrighty. So that's your top, that's your number 10? Yeah, that's my number 10. Okay. Uh, number nine, Civilization Five. I played that a good bit, but not, I'm sure, as much as you. I played Civilization <laughs> Three a lot, which surprises me. It's this low on this list because certainly recently it's something I've been playing a ton of. I haven't played Six yet. Yeah, you were streaming through every uh, every, uh, every Civilization. Leader. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I played two that had the FMV characters. Mm -hmm. If you want me to like a game, stick some FMV in there. Oh. <laughs> and it gives it two points. <laughs> that was the one where they had the, like, the Elvis and Perkins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I played the shit out of that oh, game. That, that's great. That but, was fun. But five, like, it had the hex-based map, 
and you couldn't stack units anymore. So the whole battle stuff was much more strategic. Yeah. You didn't just have stacks of doom anymore. So you really had to think about how you're going to approach a city. And you had to have way many more units, and it was just much more tactical. Um, the game was beautiful. A lot of the civs aren't like nowhere near balanced, which is kind of my only fault for the game. But there's just been so much community love for it as well. You mm -hmm. like the Steam Workshop and stuff <laughs> of um, you know their own community balance patches. Yeah, and like different maps, and like you can play Game of Thrones. Yeah, through Civ yeah. Five and all that kind of stuff. You can um, you can play on like real world or play on like a zoomed in like. U.S. or European, all that kind of stuff too, like yeah. just map-wise. Yeah, I messed around with that a little bit. Yeah, I put about 300 hours into it, I think, and that's no multiplayer. Just, just single player? Yeah, just single Please. player. Wow. Yeah. So. Just like campaign stuff? No, just um, not even campaign stuff, just n the base game. Oh, wow. Where it's all random. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So. All random? All me. Yeah. No. Uh, so number eight, bring b back up to the action category and back to Capcom as well, actually. Capcom? Yeah. Mega Man? I heard of them once upon a time. Devil May Cry. Oh, that was close. Three <laughs> is uh, my favorite Devil May Cry game. I played all of them. Um, I, I like D DMC. A lot of people, that's very controversial about whether they like that one or not. But I've played the first Devil May Cry. Yeah. I don't know that I've played any of the others. Uh, you like play DMC? Two, three, four, DMC, like yeah. all that kind of stuff. Three is the best one, um, just in terms of, well, a lot of things, but gameplay is where it really mastered it. Like, it really required a lot from the player to be good at it, mm -hmm. and once you did get good at it, it felt just like an extension of yourself. You which, know? Yeah. which one required the guy to, like, <clears throat> surf around on a pizza and then kill a, kill a dog in an alleyway? Cerberus in an alleyway or something. Three. Three? Yeah. Okay. I either saw or played... That bit, and I remember nothing else after. Okay. Because he was pretty tough. He probably didn't make it past him. Probably didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I remember surfing in, like, on a pizza and, like, a pool table and sure. reapers or something. Oh, yeah. The cutscenes in that were just, like, lunacy. Just madness. But cool at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, like, Dante's just one of the... If we ever do the top ten coolest characters of all time, Dante has to be on there. He's just... Mm -hmm. What? Come on now. Mm -hmm. He's just... Dante is cool. I guess. He's cool as fuck. Because he doesn't wear a shirt. <laughs> in that one, he doesn't. He gets a shirt eventually. He's a Does cool he? dude in DMC also. Yeah, he's a cool dude. If we're counting him as different characters. Um, but that sort of character design of like the red jumpsuit and the white hair mm -hmm. has really resonated with me for some reason. And having all those different combinations of the guns and the swords and the different fighting styles. Yeah. Well, you used like uh, Vincent as well, didn't you? Yeah. It's probably Vin similar. Vincent yeah. Valentine. Yeah, Vincent. Yeah. Um, Bash the Stampede from Trigun. Just... Oh, I think about Vincent Valentine. Well, yeah, yeah. he like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Devil May Cry 3, challenging, but the good kind of challenging, you know. Okay. Uh, number seven is probably the most recent one on this list, and that's going to be Towerfall Ascension. We, that, we played that on a stream recently. We did. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. That is a couch co-op game. Or... Um, <laughs> it had to be co-op. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... Is yeah. that the game that we played the other day? Yeah, with the archers. Okay. Yeah, 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 four, yeah. It's 2D, four players shooting each other or working together to fight the bad guys and stuff, which yeah. is fun, too. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, just being the fighting each other would have been great, mm -hmm. and it would have been a fantastic game, but it also had the two-player co-op and then the four-player co-op in the expansion. Yeah. And those were fantastic modes. It has time trials and everything else. Like, it's a huge game for the price and the fact that it was... You know, almost just this one guy. Yeah, right? yeah, Going. yeah. And you guys, I know, like you and Calvin and like your family and stuff, have put so many hours yeah, into we like put the competitiveness. Tons into of it. hours. Into how many? It. How many matches have we actually played in that? Uh, like individual matches. I think we we broke one point five like million matches or something like that. Like not games, right? But matches. But the stages, yeah. Probably. I mean, we played so the heck many. out of that game. Like, and I, I still want to play it right now. Yeah. But. It's that sort of game that, since it came out, I've been playing it almost nonstop, mm -hmm. and I don't want to stop. Yeah, yeah. Because it's just so tight, and it's so imaginative, and... It doesn't get I, boring. And, like, you know, I grew up in the NES, right? And I, I've played more retro games than modern games, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wanted an arena where I could show off my two-dimensional platforming skills. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that was the one, you know? Whereas in first-person shooters, I'm not so good. Yeah. But you get me in a 2D arena, I'm going to... Rick. <laughs> and he, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I need more practice. We'll see what happens. Hashtag kill Rick. Uh, number six is Contra Shattered Soldier. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. So this is retro in sort of the modern era. Um, still 2D. The Contra series has been around since early arcade days. Uh, NES, Super NES. It's been mm -hmm. on everything, I think. 
Yeah, almost, almost every console. If if they didn't make a new one, they at least brought back old ones on yeah. it again. And it's just that's the one they remade. Is it, 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 Contra Shattered Soldier? Yeah. Um, they redid a couple of levels and stuff in it. Like there's some very familiar points yeah. of like different Contra games. Sure. But it's still on its own very unique. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a new game. So if you're not familiar with Contra, it's a 2D game where you're, it's an action platformer where you're yeah. shooting guns at enemies, right? Mm-hmm. The thing about it is it's just so difficult. Yeah, <laughs> that's you're, like it's called a glory. It, it, it was the first one with the uh, the up up down down left right left right B A B A start. Uh, the Konami code. Yeah, which yep. a lot of people know now as just a, the Konami code. Sure. But that's kind of where it originated from. Because you needed the lives, yeah, and that you, gave you extra lives. Yeah, you needed it. The first one, I played that one so much, I could beat it without losing a life. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't been able to do that in any of the other ones. The first NES one? Yeah, Be- because that one's short. It's only like eight levels. Yeah. Um, but I think Shattered Soldier, at least so far for me, is the pinnacle of the series. Yeah. Because it had it had like eight stages, but it graded you on each of the stages. Right, so you could sort of be sort of a more casual player, although you couldn't be too casual because it still rocked your socks. Still a really tough game. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you could go through and you can get like all C's on all the levels, and like that's maybe it was as far as your skill yeah. level could and take you. And you beat it. Yeah, and you beat the game. But if you kept going at it and you got A's and S's, it unlocked the later levels, and you saw all oh, there's more to this game, mm-hmm. and it expects it demands this for me to see it, you know. And like when you see those endings, they're god awful, but you earn them. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a fun game. There's a game I remember Rick and I played a lot. Yeah, and it's still one that I would love to go back and play again today, like to go back and stream. Sure, and you'll see on a lot of my list here, um, like the idea of co-op games, right, where you're able to play with someone else. Cause yeah, that for me is a big part of what I love about gaming. Yeah, uh, but not online because that's just sacrilege. You got to be able to see their face and punch them when they do things wrong. Number five is Dragon Quest Eight. Okay. Amazingly enough, the first and only JRPG I put on this list. I almost can't believe it. I can't, I can't believe Quest it. Eight. I can't believe it either. Because I, I love the Final Fantasy series, and there's a bunch of other JRPGs I love. But Dragon Quest VIII, to me, some of it is the game, but some of it is how I played it. Yeah. So it's the when Maggie and I first got married, that's the first game we played together, kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like we played it every day. Right, and we just loved it. Was, it. was it one of those where like you guys played it together, or did she watch you play to no. see the story unfold? Or we went back and forth. Yeah, okay. and we'd just like take over. So I, so I've had Melanie like sit back, like especially like the Uncharted games. Yeah, she'd sit back and want to watch the story unfold. Sure, uh, I've, I've done that with the Metal Gear games. Yeah, Mag. but I, it's just it does JRP like it didn't innovate anything in the genre. No, but it perfected everything. Like, the combat system was incredible. It was turn-based, mm-hmm. but you had so many options, and a, a lot of characters, everything was voice-acted, which was a first for me at the time. Yeah. Um, and all the voices were great. All the characters were so memorable, except your character didn't talk. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was awesome as well. There were just spells, and the world was just massive, right? And, again, about the exploring thing I was talking about earlier, like... You know, you, you go back and forth through these three towns a few times. Okay. And you're like, you know, this world's pretty big. And then you start going further than that. And then you eventually you get a bird that you can ride on. And you, like, go up and see the whole world and realize you haven't touched a hundredth of it. Really? Right? Jeez. So, like, it's just that mind-blowing moment. And it's not like something like Skyrim where there's a yeah. million things out there, but you'll probably never see them. Yeah. This is the story takes you to all those places, and there's a reason for it, and the story is amazing. And wow. all the characters you meet, the NPCs are really memorable. Uh, the music is incredible. The art was done by... The Dragon Ball Z guy? Yeah, the Dragon Ball Z guy. Yeah. Um, I, love, I love that name. It's a good name for a guy. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I spent 100 hours in that game to beat it. Yeah. Like, I would start... Maggie just started again on her phone. She, she I saw her play playing it the other day, yeah. yeah. Huh. I saw that. And I, I, and I would love to start it again as well. Like, it's incredible. Number four? Four. Number four? Four. Super Smash Brothers 4. Four. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to disagree with you there. So, my... I feel like this is the next step from Towerfall. <laughs> we all have a different relationship with Super Smash Brothers here at this table. Yeah. Some of us are very bad ones. Some of, some of us are older with us. Some, some of us with are us. like the grandfather. You know, some of us are in our primes, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us are newborns, right? Just learning how to walk. But it's something that I think has united us 
Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, that I feel like that game has a lot to do with like why we're together yeah. the way we are. You yeah. know, yeah. Why Blind Wave exists, I think. Yeah, is largely in part to Super Smash Bros. Yeah. Like, hey, let's yeah. play Smash Bros. What's that? Yeah. Let's yeah. play. So. Aaron and I started, like, Sh Shane and Eric and some of their friends had been playing. I'll get into my personal history, but yeah. yeah. Like, me and Eric and a few other friends were playing first. Sure. And then I met Shane and started playing, and I brought Aaron in. And we, we should tell that playing. story at the college. Someday. Okay. We sucked at it, but we were still drawn into it, I think. Yeah. Right? It was still fun. And, like, f free for alls, you still get a kill every now and then. The concept of screwing Especially over. Especially Ike's. The con <laughs> we, I think the other thing, too, we both picked characters where you just could screw over people. Yeah. I did. Especially in four-way four, four -way fights, you know? Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. You so know, Ike's sitting there just charging up, waiting. You know, Kirby's falling and sucks someone up, spits them on the stage. He's like, fuck! But, yeah. like, eventually, we probably played 20 hours a week for, like, two or three years. Probably. Probably. Yeah, at least, yeah. Right? Probably. Yeah. All, of, so. all of us together. Probably. And got good at it, like tournament level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good sure. at it. We went to a few tournaments and um, placed over 500 and, yeah. And just the fact that I never wanted to stop playing it. And even now, like it had been years before I touched four. four and it just reignited this fire into me that I thought was long gone. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, and now right. it's raging more than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just incredible experience. Yeah, if you guys missed it, we had a we had a Smash Brothers stream like a week or two ago. Yeah, the VOD yeah. should be going so, up. So yeah, I think we saved it, so it might end up on YouTube as an edited video. But hopefully, you guys enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully, there's more of them. Yeah, hopefully, there's more yeah. of that. Okay, so and I'm sure they'll have more to say about Smash. Number three is Mega Man Two. Mm. Yeah, Mega Man Two is a good one. Oh, Mega Man Two on a lot of people's so lists. Again, I've played every Mega Man game, not X. I didn't like X. The Mega Man games. Yeah, but Mega Man 1 through 10. What about the, the it, PlayStation oh, My number... Yeah, 8. Mega Man, like, Legacy, whatever it was. Right? It was like the oh, 3D yeah. PlayStation one, remember that? The RPG one. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah, I played that. I liked it. Um, that's not really canon for the original. Yeah. It, it had its flaws. Don't get me wrong. It had its I, flaws. I watched a speedrun of that game. It was interesting. <laughs> but, yeah, I liked that game. But for me, it was between... Mega Man 2 and 3. And okay. I think every Mega Man fan has to ask themselves that question someday. <laughs> Between know? 2 and 3? Yeah. Is it 2 or is it 3? 3 is the one I beat. 3 is the only one I beat. I don't really remember 3 that much. And object. I remember 2 and I remember 9. Yeah. Those are the two I really remember. 9 is great. If I were being objective about it, 3 is the better game. It's the longer game. It has the slide. It has more mechanics. It has more better quality bosses mm -hmm. and more better quality music, I would say. But, I don't know, the opening theme on Mega, or, no, Mega, 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 Man, Mega 2. Man 2. I know. It's so good. I'm not saying every track, track is better. Okay. I'm just saying overall. But Mega Man 2 was one of the very first games I ever got. And it is the game by far that I've beaten the most. Like, I, I, I probably play it every month. And sometimes more than that. And it's just, like, I played it. My grandmother played it with me. Mm -hmm. She played, like, Tetris and some NES games with me yeah. and stuff. And, um, you know, it's the first game I got good at. It's the first game I beat. I think, and just those robot masters are just so memorable. And like, yeah. you can play three notes of any of those soundtracks, and I can tell you what robot master it is <laughs> from that game. Um, I, I could tell you after listening to the whole song for probably every Mega Man game, but for that one, it's just I can close my eyes and play the entire game with my eyes closed in my mind. Like I played it that much, and it just has been an incredible memory for me. And like, I love all the Mega Man games. Hmm. Yeah. I love the Mega Man games. I don't know if I got into them too late. I feel like I was better at them when I was younger. <laughs> and I go back and try to play them now. Yeah. And I, I'm, I, I'm like, what happened? Sure. You know? <laughs> I well, to beat at least some of these guys. I keep failing everybody. <laughs> that happened to me with Twisted Metal. Ooh, Because I was yeah. the shit at Twisted Metal. Like, I forgot about Twisted Metal. Like Twisted Metal 2? But then I went back like five years ago, just smoked. Right? I couldn't beat the first level. <laughs> Dude, like, they're they're so different. The mechanics are like, you're not used to mechanics now. The yeah. driving mechanics. I guess. But I, remember, I remember us playing that. You know, sweet that sweet Tooth and Minion? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or did you play someone else? Well, you were a bitch and playing Minion, yeah. obviously. Minion was good. Obviously. Fuck he yeah, was, he was an good. unlockable character. Of course he was good. He was a Kuma. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Well, let's move on. It was easier for me to come up with my top 10. And we just looked at the list. I've, I've kept track of every single game I've ever played. And it was like 833 so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that doesn't include any that I played this week. <laughs> uh, so getting those 10 games out of those 800 was easier than me picking which one of these is going to be one and which one's going to be two. Just because they're so close. Yeah. They're both so good. It's so close. And for me, number two is Metal Gear Solid. 
There's a lot of reasons for it. It's the first game I played that was mature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That like felt like more than a game. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like I need to beat the levels or I need to get the high score. It was I'm playing this for the story. The story, yeah. yeah right? Exactly. And for these characters and I am in this world. Yeah. And that was the first game like that for me. And it, it really changed my life because at that moment, after beating that game, I sat there and it's the first time I ever read all the credits. Hey, watching, yeah. And I was, you know, listening to the ending theme music. I know the name of, but I can't. From Every Solid? Yeah. Yeah, it's why they're showing like yeah, the, the animals sure. yeah, in, yeah. in Alaska and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but in any case, I read through them all and I realized people make these games. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Right? And so after that, I started going out and learning like programming and um, picking up RPG Maker and just everything I could to make games. And you know, I've been doing that ever since. Mm-hmm. And it's probably my most enjoyable hobby is, you know, designing, making games, video games, board games, role playing games, whatever. And that all started with Metal Gear Solid. I feel like I remember a discussion when we were younger where you were like, Aaron, I watch these credits. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're like, people make this stuff. We should make this stuff. And they're like 20 years long. Yeah. You know, and like, it's a long credit. Yeah. And like, yeah. like I, that was when Rick and I, like, we were like, well, let's make games. And him and I both were like, well, we'll start doing this. And he got, got RPG Maker yeah. and started making. Uh, and Game Maker. What was it? Was it Dra- Dra- Dragon Quest? Dragon game? Legacy. Dragon Legacy, yeah. I remember, like, he, and I would, like, test it, and he would, like, mess with it more, and I would test it and play it. And then we started doing other things, and then eventually we had the whole Rousenet Games thing. And yeah. Yeah. So, times. like, you know, besides the fact that it's just an incredible game, mm-hmm. and it's something, again, I've beat many, many, many times. Oh, it's a critically acclaimed game. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's a critically incredible. acclaimed developer. And that game, too, like... It got fucked recently by... Konami. Konami, Konami yeah. yeah. I mean, and that, that game, too, came, I feel like, a, like, so much further from its Metal Gear... Definitely. Like games, you know? Yeah. Like they had it on the NES and stuff, yeah. and then well, it came to Metal Gear Solid, and it's still like in the same universe, but it came so much further for me, as far as a game that you don't fight. Well, the retcon versions know? of those games were better. For me, what transformed video games for everybody was Final Fantasy VII and Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, probably, yeah. Because I don't think video games were ever the same after that. Oh, no. Um, it was, the, people started looking at, hey, we could have storylines. Hey, we could have like deep, meaningful things in these. In these whole worlds. Yeah. You yeah. know, that back then, they looked real to us. I mean, if you go back now, it's like, you know. Yeah, very polygonal. It, it doesn't hold up, stuff. but, you know, back then, I could put myself in that world. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I couldn't do that on a 2D game. Even, like, Chrono Trigger, something that was gorgeous. I couldn't put myself there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I love the whole series. I haven't played 5 yet. Um, I will I, let you borrow my PS4 and play 5. Yeah, 5 is... Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. it I need to. Very, it's very... It was very fun, very different, yeah. but also still very, very familiar. Sure. You know what I mean? It is, yeah. And I, I could fun. talk about the whole series for hours, but I'll move on to the number one. All right. If I think about this, it always surprises me <laughs> that this is my number one. But it's Resident Evil 4. Mm-hmm. That's a great fucking game. It's, it's the best game, probably. I, I would say Tetris is the best video game ever made. Hard to argue. Tetris the simplicity. Yeah, it, it, but we'll people go, in different cultures and languages can understand exactly. it. Exactly, it, it, it's the universal game. Transcends, right? transcends language. It, it, yeah, not, not just language, but I think alien species. <laughs> Tetris. I be like, this is the shit. I believe that. Right? But I believe that. It is is. <laughs> Resident Evil Four is for me. I started with Resident Evil One. And I played it so young, I was terrified. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was terrified. Resident Evil 4 was the first of, like, oh, the God. So scary. See, Resident Evil 2 scared the... 1 scared the fuck out. When you open that door, yeah. Resident Evil 1, you see oh. a zombie eating that dude. I never oh, had man. PlayStation. I never played the first Resident Evil games. Resident Evil 4 was the first Resident Evil game I played. And I think it's the first one. I beat it. Yeah. It's the first, like, horror Four genre minutes? game that I ever beat. Yeah. I also had tried Silent Hill 2, and I got into oh, this Silent fog. Hill. Silent Hill 2 is a scary, I got into, scary thing. I got into, honorable mention. I got yeah. into fog where uh, you hear, like, dogs and stuff, yeah. like, growling and whatnot, and I turn off the game. I, I was mean, too scared. But you know, the bomb was funny. It was, is the bomb was there because of draw distance. It was at night with the windows open <laughs> in my bedroom alone with the lights yeah, off. And I'm like, play. nope, nope, done. <laughs> windows open is the worst thing. Oh, yeah. You gotta close yeah. that curve. Because you heard bathroom. growling? You're like, shit, was that outside? <laughs> <laughs> do you remember Siren? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that game was I scary. attempted those. So we're going to do a top 10 horror games. Ooh. And every single one of those is Aaron going to be, I played the first 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's still me. I, I played the demo for The Room, the Silent Hill 4. Yeah. I didn't go any further than the demo. But I love horror games, and I don't have any problems beating them. But 
back now, then. Now. Now, but uh, like back then, like the dogs jumping through the window. Oh, gosh. And just the ticking clock in the dining room. Mm. I don't know if you remember this. Was he one, though? Right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It just filled me with so much tension that I had to have my mom turn off our ticking clock in the house. <laughs> I couldn't take it. Yeah. <laughs> he, he still can't take ticking clocks in any house. He's like, he's like, like mine and hook and hook. Yeah. My exactly. mom love, loves Crazy. clocks. <laughs> I know. And she had to turn off all of the mechanical clocks in the entire house because it would just drive him nuts. Yeah, the first time I went to meet the parents, I was like, well, this isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was giving <laughs> up already. <laughs> Um, just because you were, you, it just built so much tension. Two but, is the first one I beat, the Leon, the Leon disc. Yeah. yeah. Resident Evil 2 Leon yeah, disc. Sure. I want to I say, I'm not the only one that gets scared of these games, too. Because I remember Resident Evil 7 came out, yeah. and Shane's like, Aaron, you and I should play this game. I'm like, well, you could just play. No. We'll play this game. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, you can just play by. No, I heard 7 is horrifying, especially in <laughs> VR mode. Yeah, yeah. VR, it's, it's terrifying. For Resident Evil 4, the reason it's my favorite is it's obviously a lot less clunky. Change the game too than the first one, but yeah, it just changed again. It changed video games. Yeah, after that, right? It invented the, the, the third person shooter, like yeah. Gears of War and all that. It still gave you the tank oh, yeah. control. See, the tank control is what hurt me trying to go back and play in Resident Evil One and stuff. Right. Play the Wii One. I, guess, I don't. I guess Resident Evil Four though, like, still had it. Sure. But it was over the shoulder, so it was easier for me to understand. Like, like grasp my hand, like head around you. Know? So Resident Evil Four is a great horror game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's still scary. Um, it may not be as tense mm -hmm. as those early ones. Just because you were so limited four? on ammo and everything, yeah. Four, I thought was just scared me more, like like because it's overwhelming. The guys come in, they're speaking that crazy ass language. Yeah, you but, hear the music, you go, oh, God, you run out of the town. But you were more equipped to deal with them. Yeah, because yeah. you could actually aim and shoot. Well, and you always had the knife. Whereas in yeah. the first one, the if you ran out of bullets, you were done. Yeah. You, you were running away. Oh, I hate managing my inventory. And Gosh. and it was like. Even if you wanted to shoot at them, they weren't on the screen because of the weird yeah, camera angles on the first see, one. Yeah, you see, it more suspense. Yeah, the, so... Uh, was Resident Evil 4 the last one that had, like, the block, like, inventory system? 5 did. Just, mm -hmm. I thought 5 just had, like, left, right, up, down, and then you had, like, extras. That was only in co-op, I think. Oh, really? Maybe I'm wrong. I thought 5 had. I thought each person could carry, like, had. one thing. Like, you could carry, like, your, your guns, and then you yeah. could carry ammo. But it wasn't really blocked. Like well, I remember, like I thought it was Resident Evil Four. Like four if you wanted this had, rifle, yeah. it took up like four, four, yeah. four spaces. Four if you wanted this, system. it took up like this L. Yeah, yeah. Question: mm -hmm. How'd you play it? Because it was exclusive to the GameCube for like over a year. Played on PS2. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's the wow. first time I played it. You Dude, waited that long? Resident Evil Four still comes out on like every console. Yeah. I want to play it's the HD they, they did a remake on it for PS4. I want to play that. <laughs> it's a tremendous horror game. It's a tremendous action game. Like, it's still, even now, like, I'll go back and play it, and, like, this is the best action game I've ever played, I think, yeah. for yeah. me. The Quick Time Events, they, the, was that the first one that did Quick Time Events? That they had in the Well, three. Shimnu, Shimnu, Shimnu was the first. Shimnu was. And then this one was the second. This okay. made it wider, like, yeah. wider recognition. Um, you know I mean? I'm going to die on some of those. <laughs> but the bosses were so imaginative, mm -hmm. and just there was all kind of different unique encounters, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, before that in action games, you had a lot of the same sort of things. But in this, like, you had so many different enemy types and variations of those enemy types and enemy types in the different, like, you know, this guy's up in a watchtower throwing grenades at you while this guy has a chainsaw, you know? You have to deal with all this stuff at oh, yeah. once with all this yeah. limited ammo, right? And it just... so good. <laughs> it was so yeah. good. Very good. I was really curious, because I remember hearing you, like, one, two, two, one, one, two, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm surprised you picked Resident Evil over Metal Gear Solid. I am, too, but I just played it again this year, and yeah. I, I, I finished playing it. I was like, I want to play this again on the hardest mode, and then I want to play it again knife only, and, like, I mean, yeah. there's also something to say about, like, how many remakes of Metal Gear Solid 1 have they made? Well, and the other thing, too, is with Resident Evil 4, I've done 100% of everything. Like, I did all the mercenary missions, I did all the side stories, yeah. I did all the difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Metal Solid 1 you did 100% everything too, though. I leveled up, well, that's much for a game, though. I, sure. I leveled up every single weapon, like, through different playthroughs, completely to the maximum. I got all the alternate costumes. I mean, it's true for Metal Gear Solid. Like, for Metal Gear Solid 1, I could get big boss rating. And in 2 and in 3. Yeah, and the stealth camo and the bandana and all yeah. the stuff. And then get a different That GameCube so. remake was fucking unbelievable, wasn't it? The Re Resident Evil 1. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played it on the Wii. Yeah. But it was largely the same. Yeah. I yeah. remember you getting in that. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. It's it's tough. Like between that one and two, honestly, I could switch him any day of the week. Might yeah. be a different one. Yeah. Oh, that's no. I, I understand that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I could switch out my bottom nine. But yeah, that's that's my top ten. And I'm I'm curious. Uh, I have an NES game. I have a PS One game. I don't have any Genesis games. I didn't play a lot of Genesis. Goes to show. Uh, well, you should have picked. Uh, more PC, PS One. So it's PS One, PS 2s PCs, and NES. It looks like that's interesting. So that's it for Rick. We'll Set. be back with Shane. Bye. Frame it on the wall. That's that's Rick's top ten list. Yeah. Uh, if you're watching this in video form, then uh, we'll be moving on to Shane's next. Make sure you guys pop over when that video pops up if it hasn't already. If Patreon. You, and if you enjoy this, make sure you guys leave comments on our Patreon or our YouTube or on Twitter or wherever. Let us know if you enjoyed this and want more stuff like it. You can also follow me in particular. No, don't do that. Through Archmaster7 <laughs> on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Yeah. Archmaster7. All right.